so I'm a big Sonic fan. I got the games. <laughs> I got the merch. I listen to the music. I love everything to do with this little guy. So when the newest Sonic Frontiers animated short came out, I thought what better time is there to rank every single online exclusive Sonic animation that's been released from 2018 through to 2022. That means we're going from Sonic Mania Adventures to Team Sonic Racing Overdrive to Sonic Colors Rise of the Wisps to the highly anticipated Sonic Frontiers Prologue Divergence. And ranking them on skill of Good! Great! Awesome! Outstanding! And... Amazing! Why that skill, you may ask? Well, because one, the Sonic Colors reference, of course, but... Two, literally none of these are bad. Which is pretty crazy considering there's like 11 or something. So? What's poppin' y'all? It's Popstar, and welcome to the Sonic Animation tier list. But, before we begin, let me know in the comments which animation was your favourite. I, I do check the comments, and I'd honestly love to see your opinion. Okay, okay, let's just get started with this. Beginning with Sonic Mania Adventures, Part 1, Sonic Returns. Right off the bat, we're treated to an incredible remix of Angel Island as we're introduced to Sonic, who's coming through a- wait, 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 is that a Phantom Ruby portal? Why would that be in here? Uh, where in the timeline is this taking pl OH MY GOD NO! <clears throat> so, Sonic soon realizes that Eggman is up to no good again and sets out to stop him. And uh, speaking of Sonic real quick, he looks absolutely incredible with this design. It's like a mashup between his Toei style from CD and his more modern classic look with the lighter shades of blue being used for his signature blue spikes. Right from the get-go, there's tons of squash and stretch in Sonic's movements, with ample use of smear frames to make Sonic look energetic and really primed for action. But something that I've also really noticed is that it's actually super cartoony and goofy because of that. All the squash and stretch and exaggeration is probably for the best, considering that there isn't actually any dialogue for Sonic and the gang, mostly because the classic versions of the characters don't speak. Instead, the humor and comedy comes from things like slapstick and facial expressions from the gang, and oh boy, let me tell you, the facial expressions are good. Here, we're introduced to our road-turned antagonist, Eggman, who comes off as more of a spoiled man-child than an actual threat in this series, and, like I'm just gonna say, I absolutely love it. Th there's something so goofy about him seeing act like this. Like, he's a man of 300 IQ, and, you know, he reaches for the Chaos Emerald, and he isn't able to grab it because of his stubby little arms. Like, it's perfect for classic Eggman. Like, it's, it's just incredible. And need I even mention the facial expressions? Like, this dude is literally a living troll. The Sonic tricks Eggman into stepping into his own trap and makes his escape, but not before uncovering Eggman's plot to gather all the Chaos Emeralds which sets up the story for the rest of the series. Find the Chaos Emeralds and stop Robotnik. Which concludes part one. Oh, and did I mention that Sonic leaves Eggman to die in an explosion? I'd give this one a solid great. It's a solid first entry into the series, with some good jokes, and it's left me honestly wanting more. So, let's see what's up next, with Sonic Mania Adventures Part 2, Sonic and Tails. Part 2 opens up with an introduction of, uh, well, you guessed it, Tails to the series. And I've gotta say, his design perfectly contrasts Sonic, in a really good way. W with an overall more vibrant orange and rounder shape in comparison to Sonic's cool blue tones and sharp pointy quills. Not only are their designs complementary, but their personalities are too. Uh, Tails is characterized as being a bit more of a timid version of Sonic, but also a bit more calculating, still showing his courageousness when he teams up with Sonic against Eggman, who somehow survived that explosion that was... Uh, wait, 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 that, that explosion was meant to kill Sonic. The dude can run faster than him in the classics and now he can take more hits?! I found the jokes here to be excellent, like how there's a few like really funny parallels between how Sonic and Eggman are defeated, as well as this one bit that got me laughing a little bit too hard. I love how the humour directly contributes to the story moving forward, something that wasn't integrated just as well in part 1, which I think made it feel a bit slower for me in comparison. And I'm absolutely loving the Sonic and Tails dynamic, and I can't wait to see more of them. I'm giving this one an outstanding rank. Really enjoyed this one. Now on to part 3, aptly titled And Knuckles, featuring everyone's favourite spiny red echidna, Knuckles, whose design is just again immaculate. He's played up to be this uber-serious guy who's, in actuality, just a big old dummy who wants to protect the Master Emerald. And this misguided, tough guy Fizzard really plays up the jokes in this one, like when he senses danger and circles around the, the Emerald like some sort of Scooby-Doo character, it's bloody great. And this personality ultimately sets him up for failure, though, when his complete polar opposite arrives on the scene. Ray the Flying Squirrel. Now, Ray's introduction is short but sweet, setting him up as this relatively carefree and happy guy, literally the opposite of Knuckles. He reveals he's looking for his friend Mighty before promptly getting, uh, well, uh... 
yeah. This in turn allows a group of Eggman robots to sneak up on our lovable enchilada, so he beats them up in a really, really stupidly funny way. Like, he looks so insanely angry, I love it. Like, it's so visceral. Uh, now, while this works here, I do hope in upcoming animation scenes we do get to see a bit more movement between attacks instead of just these kind of stills. I think it works for me here because its intent is to serve as the comedy of this part. You know, really playing up these over-exaggerated emotions of Knuckles, but if it was meant to be in a more serious scene, I think it could be a bit of a pace breaker. So anyway, Eggman steals the emerald. Yeah, he, he literally just comes in and goes, YOIK! Like, they're doing it with Sonic's plane too? What a rebel. And that then treats us to this delightful scene. This was another really great episode, honestly. I think the goofiness of Knuckles was maybe leaned into a little bit too much at the beginning, making it quite jarring to go from my perception of a hot-headed, stoic, but misguided character to a more goofy, raggy counterpart, but you, you know. Either way, I had a blast watching this one. I'm going to slot this one into the awesome tier. Oh yeah, and Ray is one of the cutest characters in the series. Him and Amy would like literally totally be best friends. Speaking of Ray, he has part four of Sonic Mania Adventures, Mighty and Ray. It's funny how one of my biggest complaints with the last part was that it established Knuckles' character too quickly, when in this part, it's one of the biggest reasons I like this part as much as I do. Metal Sonic makes his formal debut in the series after being teased in the episodes prior. He's in search of the Chaos Emeralds for his creator, and he does not mess around. Like, seriously, he does not. He heads straight for Ray, beating him down in literally one blow, and the way he moves and attacks feels so precise and calculated. Like, he doesn't want any fuss, and he wants to get his job done to a frightening level of precision. This is Metal Sonic done right, which is only backed up by that godly OST in the back. Seriously. Like, oh my god, is this, is this T-Lopes? Is this T-Lopes? Like, it, it, oh my god. He isn't an Eggman robot in this scene, he's a murder machine with a big old E for everyone holding his killer instincts back from paving the walls of this cartoon with blood. He's insane. And while the audience is trying to recover from the whiplash they just received, they slapped him across the face again with the reveal of Mighty, who then proceeds to sock metal in the face with a freaking boulder. Now this gives Mighty's reveal a massive sense of grandiosity and importance, and it also shows how Mighty and Ray get along. And god, look at these facial expressions. And this is where Metal Sonic's characterization shines again. He knows his objective is to get the Chaos Emerald in Mighty's possession, but he also knows he can't take Mighty in a fight head-on. So instead, he uses Ray as a freaking hostage to negotiate with Mighty Fiamma. Like, literally, a hostage, he's out for blood, and I am loving it. Not to mention the fact that Metal, in this very moment, like us viewers are seeing in real time with him, managed to figure out how much Ray meant to Mighty, and managed to use that to win is insane. Like, easy outstanding tier for me. I think I enjoyed Sonic and Tails Xanax just a little bit more than this episode, but it's really, really close. Uh, just a little bit more action definitely would have tipped the scales for me. And now that everyone has their course set towards Eggman's base, we're finally on to part 5, Metal Mayhem. The looming threat of Eggman's base sets the tone incredibly well. This is our hero's final destination, where every story comes together. Metal Sonic effortlessly takes the final emeralds from Sonic and Tails and becomes supercharged, setting the stakes for this fight super high. Sonic, characteristically unfazed, accepts this challenge and is immediately thrown against the wall. Until, hands down, one of the stupidest, yet most in-character moments in the series happens. Uh, Mighty and Ray just happen to casually stroll into the fight. Much of the confusion of both Sonic and Metal Sonic. And then they engage in a round of Bistikos to help Sonic until they're all backed into a corner. Everything seems on the up until Eggman reveals his trump card, the Master Emerald, accompanied by what is uh, debatably the most savage OST in the series. Like seriously, this Death Egg remix goes hard. And just as all seems lost, freaking Knuckles the Echidna comes in and socks the super out of metal, like sending him flying. And I, I'm talking, Nyoom! and then he just he just takes the Master Emerald and dips. Like uh, what? Like, all this build-up, and it's just done in one hit. It's honestly the funniest thing ever. And then the series, the, the, the series just ends there. It's so stupidly hilarious. Like, we get one more scene after that, and then it's done. And do you know what that scene is? That, that scene has the only piece of vocal dialogue in the entirety of Sonic Mania Adventures. And you know what it is? It's Tails choking on a chili dog.
<laughs> this one's an awesome, hands down. Almost everything in this part was incredible, but I felt that the final confrontation was just a bit of a letdown for me, considering just how densely packed Mighty's fight with Metal was in the previous part. Still a really good episode, though. And that's pretty much all there is for Mania Adventures. Though we have one little extra for it, and, um, you're not gonna believe this, but, uh... Yeah. I mean it. The Amy Rose Holiday Special is my favourite part, hands down. Why is that, you may ask? Well, simple. It achieves everything it sets out to do, and even more. This part takes place immediately after part 5, seeing Eggman have a temper tantrum- God, I love this version of the character- as he ditches his faithful companion Metal Sonic, which is just... cruel. Time passes, seasons change, and Metal is still abandoned, until an unlikely hero pays him a visit. Amy Rose, sporting one of my favourite designs ever for the character. Now, Amy isn't portrayed as overly scared or a stalker like she was in the year classic and adventure era games. Instead, she's a deeply caring and understanding individual who even goes out of her way to help medals on a couple characters, knowing just how broken and sad he is. The jokes are based off of each character's personality in this part, and it works wonders for the comedy. Like when Amy gives Metal a flower to give to Eggman in a boat, and Eggman accepts it after looking around to see if anyone is looking just in case they think he's a softie. Like, he is so funny and I love it. And I, I think that's what I like the most in these types of animations. Character-driven stories. They just invest me in the animation a lot more than maybe goal-driven adventures. That's more of a personal choice, but I mean that's what the TLS is for, in my opinions. Amy even gets to show off her more romantic side, coming off as a shy lover to Sonic who easily delivers the best joke in the entire part. Nothing is undercooked in here. Everything was together to deliver on the story the team wanted to tell. Easy amazing to you. And with that, Mania Adventures is done. I had a lot of fun with this series. There wasn't a single episode that I even remotely disliked, and the episodes that I enjoyed, I really enjoyed. Up next, we have the animated collaboration to promote Team Sonic Racing, Team Sonic Racing Overdrive, parts 1 and 2. Right off the bat, there's some noticeable differences in animation style in this miniseries, as well as the general character designs as a whole from Mania Adventures. For starters, each character is their modern counterpart, which means their designs generally have longer limbs and darker tones of fur. The darker tones gives the overall aesthetic of the animation a really, really nice vibrant look to it in combination with the highlights present on the cast. When in terms of the character designs themselves, uh, let's just say these are easily some of my favourite versions of the characters to draw. The animation as a whole has a more comic book-esque feel to it, which I think really suits it. It's essentially a modern-day equivalent of Mania Adventures. Still with no talking, but this time with more cars, more characters, and more Big the Cat, baby! Woohoo! Yeah! Big the Cat! Big the Cat! Love Big the Cat, baby! Woohoo! Yeah! Big the Cat! I got a tattoo of Big the Cat! Woohoo! Uh, speaking of Big, he's pretty much the focus of the comedy in this one. Outside of Knuckles being an absolute gem like in literally every animation he's in. Like, please, please, Sega, please, just give us an exclusive Knuckles animation already. I need one. Now, the biggest problem I have with part one is actually the inverse of why I enjoy the Mania Adventures comedy so much which is the fact that there's no clear motive for the characters in this part. All we're given is the characters are racing, which is fine, but is it a championship race? Are they trying to win a prize? Context usually adds to the comedy for me, so seeing more emphasis being placed on Big for half the runtime for one joke because Big is more of a meta joke character for the fans was a bit of a pace breaker for me. Maybe I'm just getting a little bit too cynical, but honestly, I quite enjoyed this. There's a ton of solid jokes and that art style is just, again, absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to slot it into the lower end of great. Now for part two, which kicks off with... <gasps> it's my boy! So part two instantly remedies my biggest complaint with part one, that being the lack of motivation for the characters, and establishes very clearly that there is, in fact, a prize to be won. We get this really charming interaction between Rouge and Knuckles, which is really, really funny. Followed up by Omega crashing his car into Rouge's! Seriously, we need more Team Dark. The dynamic here is so good. Like, it's so, so good. And then Knuckles steals the show again with this! He's he's really, honestly, just the best character in these shows. My god. So Sonic and Tails are attempting to fight against Shadow, and are having a pretty rough time with him as this really nice instrumental version of Greenlight Ride comes on in the back. And they're having trouble until, you know, your boy Knuckles comes back in. Hell yeah, Knuckles! Let's go, Knuckles! Got a tattoo of Knuckles! Woo! So this leads to a bunch of really charming character interactions and a near-death experience for Tails. Until the group finally outmatched the edgy hedgy with a team ultimate. I gotta say, I love the integration of the vocal version of Greenlight Ride as the action gets intense. Like, it really, really adds to the drama, and results in probably one of my favourite endings to an animated short yet. 
low amazing tier for me. Honestly, this is just so good. Oh yeah, and uh, did I mention Eggman gets hit by a car? How many hits can this guy take? And now we're on a number three of four. Sonic Colors, Rise of the Wisps. And uh, look, I, I'm just going to be completely honest. As a collective, I think these two are my least favorite of the bunch. The story is essentially a Jade Ghost Wisp seeks out Sonic and Tails to help save its friends who it inadvertently helped to trap. Sonic and Tails agree, and from there it's a race against Time and Metal Sonic to see who can get there first, which seems like a pretty interesting story. So starting off with the positives of part one, everything to do with the animation side of things is great. This aesthetic is essentially a step forward from Team Sonic Racing's designs, with the liner either not being there, or maybe the more likely option being coloured the same as the character's main colours. Uh, the animation is very stylish and fluid, especially when Sonic uses his boost, which is something that hasn't actually shown up in an animation form until now. Huh. And we also finally get some actual vocal performances of Roger Craig Smith as Sonic and Kate Higgins as Tails, who give Sonic and Tails the extra oomph they really need to stand out against from the rest of the cast. They do some really solid work here. And now for the negatives. All of which aren't even to do with the animation side of things. This all basically comes down to my own personal preferences, and my sheer and utter distaste towards the writing in Sonic Colors itself, which this short aims to mimic. While Sonic and Tails' comedic retelling of Eggman's story from the Jade Ghost is pretty endearing at the beginning, having Sonic quip through an alien's retelling of its traumatic near-death experience was a little bit unnerving for me. It becomes painfully clear what type of story this is going to be when these little wisp dudes are introduced, shown to be some sort of wisp task force, which wouldn't be too bad if they actually did something unique with their powers. I, I think the only one who did something like that was Cube, but what really caught my attention throughout this entire short was the character assassination Metal Sonic went through. R remember how in Mania Adventures he had the intellect to figure out how to manipulate Mighty into handing in the Chaos Emerald through a hostage negotiation within seconds of being faced with the circumstances? Well, this is the same Metal Sonic who doesn't even think to move around this massive cube to nab the wisp he's after. Like, what? He can go around the outside of him. The, the cube is literally stationary. He's stuck to the floor. Just go around him to catch the Jade Wisp and then get the... <sighs> Look... I stand by the opinion that Wisps, as a concept, can lead to some of the most interesting scenarios if they are written correctly, but instead they are written so poorly that they make Metal Sonic, a character who was written so well in previous animations that I absolutely adored, it made him look like a bumbling idiot trying to catch them. Also that they could have this cliché narrative of, oh man, I should have been better, I should have saved my friends, which is basically just the Sonic Lost World plot, oh my god. So for everything that's great in this part, which is mostly the animation and the voice acting, there's something equally uninspired that stops me from enjoying it more. That's our first good tier ranking. Still a solid animation, but not something I would personally come back to. Uh, can part 2 redeem part 1? Well, it's in great tier at least. Part 2 follows Sonic and Tails racing against Metal Sonic to free the Wisps, with that fluid animation I was talking about before being on full display, and oh my god is it a treat to the eyes. The same negatives from before apply to this part too, but because this part is so action heavy, the poor writing is mostly pushed to the side in favour of some pulse pounding action. I, I still think that Wisp powers could have been used in more interesting ways, like maybe having the Spike Wisp help Sonic traverse upwards, like up a cliff, where Metal Sonic could fly up, but you know, that that's a minor gripe. Despite all my cynicism, Roger and Kate's performances in combination with the action lands this part into the great tier. That's some solid Sonic fun right there. Like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. No, seriously, seriously like, this is you on the strip. I really wasn't expecting that. And finally, we're here. The Sonic Frontiers Prologue Divergence. Now, I know that I said we'd be ranking these animations on five tiers, those being good, great, almost outstanding and amazing, but uh, this animation? I'll be honest with you. It's beyond the tier list. It's beyond any sort of goof or gaff I could have put in the script. It's beyond what I could have ever expected from this whole online animation tie-in thing. Divergence is Sonic the Hedgehog in its purest form. And it doesn't even feature Sonic at all. The past is a strange thing. You might think you know it better than anyone else, but look just a little closer and your entire present Maybe even your entire future is put into contention. Knuckles is a character who is tethered to both past and present. Enslaved by a responsibility given to him without his consent by those who came before him. He makes do with this reality and 
atoning for their wrongdoings, but ultimately, he's alone. And he has to accept the knowledge that the Master Emerald, the gem that he's been protecting for his entire life, caused all of this. But Knuckles, ever resilient, doesn't lament over this, instead looking towards the future and of its safety. He knows his responsibility, not wishing for the tragedy that befell his people to happen again. And ultimately, he seeks out ways of protecting the Emerald further, accepting his present responsibility by seeking out his past to secure a brighter future. This sort of character depth and introspection hasn't been seen in over a decade in the franchise. Behind the visage of what many would consider a meathead with anger issues, is a deeply neglected character that hasn't had the time of day in the franchise as a key player since 2006. And yet, here he is, accompanied by a deeply moving soundtrack and visuals that are a true feast for the eyes. There isn't fan service for the sake of fan service or snappy one-liners trying to get the viewer's attention. All there is is a living, breathing world, and an invitation for you to explore it too. And this world isn't here just for the sake of storytelling, like in games like Sonic Colors or Sonic Forces. This world has a story that is worth telling. One with depth like we haven't seen since Sonic Unleashed, Sonic and the Black Knight, or even Sonic Adventure 2. In those games, we can see ourselves in the stories they tell. We relate to their struggles and we learn more about ourselves from them. From Shadow's grief to Melina's despair to Sonic's respect, I have learned so much about myself from the humanity that each of these stories are strongly imbued with. And I have never related more to Knuckles in the entire series than I do in this one animated short. And, as fate would have it, in trying to protect the Master Emerald, Knuckles is thrown into danger yet again. Almost every time he's been in danger in the series has been because of the Emerald, and it is no different here. He attempts to show a more brash personality against his true enemy, Sage, engaging in a fight that is just a spectacle within itself, but his insecurity gets the best of him for just a split second, and he falls. Reduced to someone who can't do anything but watch on helplessly as life goes on without him. Repeating his opening monologue about his doubts and worries about what life could have been without this burden, which is honestly just haunting because of how many times he's been involved in attacks like this. He's almost trapped in an endless cycle of self-reassurance and self-doubt about what he's doing. It's all he knows and all he wants to do. But has he ever thought about what it's cost him? This is, hands down, the best Sonic animation I've ever seen. Storytelling, animation, music, everything was flawless. To everyone who worked on this animation, thank you and a huge well done. This is the type of project that I could only dream about being a part of, and you all made it a reality for a fan like me. Now I can only sit idly by and wait until Sonic Frontiers releases so I can experience the rest of the story. I truly hope it lives up to my expectations. So, that's the video. If you're wondering, I'll be covering Frontiers on the channel, so if you want to stick around, why not consider hitting that subscribe button? And if you enjoyed this little tier list thing, why not drop a like? I might even do more scripted content like this in the future. So, that's all from me. Have a wonderful day. And this is Poppy, signing off.